continue in this chapter this morning. Thank you uh, again for joining me as we begin a new week in the Word of God. Let us grow this week, right? I want to pick up in verse 16 this morning and read down to verse 27 as we uh, read this. Remember the context. All of this refers back to the question that was asked in verse 1 of this chapter. If you go back to verse 1, he says in Romans chapter 11 and verse 1, I say then, God has not rejected his people, has he? May it never be. For I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, the tribe of Benjamin. In verse 2, Paul answers the question, God is not rejecting his people from whom he foreknew. Or do you not know that the scripture says in a passage about Elijah, he pleads with God against Israel? We explored the context of that. But with, the context, with that context in mind, I want to pick up in verse 16 of Romans chapter 11 and read down to verse 27. Romans chapter 11, look at verse 16. If the first piece of dough is holy, the lump is also. And if the root is holy, the branches are too. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive are grafted in among them, and become partaker with them of the rich root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant toward the branches. But if you are arrogant, remember that it is not you who supports the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off, so that I might be grafted in. Quite right. They were broken off for their unbelief, but you stand by your faith. Do not be conceited, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Behold, then, the kindness and severity of God to those who fail, severity, but to you, God's kindness. If you continue in his kindness, otherwise you will also be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree and were grafted contrary to the nature of a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these who are the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery, so that you will not be wise, so that you will not be wise in your own estimation, that a partial hardening has happened in Israel to the fullness of the Gentiles that come in. And so all this will be saved, just as it's written, deliver or come from Zion. He will move on God us from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Paul uses uh, two metaphors in our reading this morning that the Jews would have been familiar with by way of describing the spiritual condition of the nation of Israel. You know, under the law of Moses, the first fruit of the harvest was holy, it was set apart for God. And the dough of, of the heave offering was made from the first fruits of the grain, leaving the whole batch of dough consecrated for the people. These fruits would be taken to the priests, making the whole harvest holy uh, to the people. The second metaphor carries the same idea using the olive tree of Israel through God's choosing began with Abraham and through his seed all nations would be blessed in the coming Messiah Jesus the Christ the Savior of the world and through Abraham's descendants through Jacob these descendants became the branches and the broken off branches obviously in, in this picture are the disbelieving rebellious Jews in, in rejecting and crucifying Jesus Gentiles as we've talked about we're, not, we're now able to come into the kingdom of God and Paul says, by their transgression, salvation, would be the Jews, salvation has come to the Gentiles. You know, the warning here is very simple for the Gentiles. Look at verse 18. Uh, listen, it's a great blessing that through the grace of God, he, he's blessed you with this wonderful life-saving opportunity. But look again at verse 18. Let, let's take this to heart. Do not be arrogant toward the branches. But if you are arrogant, remember that it is not you who supports the root, but the root supports you. You will say, then branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. In other words, this isn't of your doing. This is nothing that you should boast in, nothing that should cause you to look down uh, upon the Jews. You're a sinner in need of God's grace as well. Verse 19, you will say, then branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. Quite right. They were broken off for their unbelief. But you stand by your faith. Don't be conceited, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he would not spare you either. I think the warning speaks for itself. Um, and certainly for us, brethren, those of us who've been blessed with the knowledge of the truth, as we talked about last Sunday in our message, as people of privilege, we, we need to remember that our hope is not because of us. We don't merit this hope. We're sinners in desperate need of God's grace. Jew and Gentiles alike, we're all in the same boat. Dead in our sins, but alive through the Holy Spirit, poured out on us through Jesus. This is God's doing, brethren, not ours. They would never be conceited in this. Let's focus on verse 22. Behold, then, the kindness and severity of God to those who fail severity, but to you, God's kindness, if you continue in his kindness, otherwise you'll also be cut off. You know, we love to talk about the kindness of God. We should. Not a day goes by in, in these readings that in some way or another, we don't remind ourselves from the word of God just how kind our God has been to us, the sinner. But in saying that, we need to understand that there's consequences for unbelief. There was consequences for the Jews, um, and there will be consequences for us. We, we can't ignore the severity of God. 
the Jewish nation serves as a reminder to all of us that there are dire consequences for, for unbelief. That wilderness generation that died in the wilderness and never experienced the promised land, they, they serve as a prime example of the dire consequences of unbelief. But to you, he says, God's kindness. If you continue in his kindness, otherwise you will be cut off. But what about the unbelieving Jews? What about those rebellious Jews? Couldn't they change? God didn't reject the individual Jew who turned back to him. God makes clear all of true Israel. We've been developing that point. Come on, read it from last week. He welcomes the unbelieving Jews with open arms if they'll come to him on his terms in belief. Um, in fact, Paul made that point. If you look back there at verse 12 in our reading there in chapter 11, it says, Now their transgression is for the world, speaking of the Jews, and their failure is riches for the Gentiles. How much more will their fulfillment be? Well, I'm speaking to you who are Gentiles, and as much then as I'm an apostle of Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. But look at verse 14. This was the goal. If, for, if somehow I might move to jealousy, my fellow countrymen, those are Jews, and save some of them. For if the rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? That's what Jesus is offering. You know, God, uh, he wants all mankind to be saved, Jew and Gentile. Back in Genesis 12, that original promise to Abraham that through his seed, <clears throat> not just Jews, but all nations of the earth would be blessed. God wants all of mankind to be saved. It makes no difference, origin of birth, race, socioeconomic status, skin color, none of that matters. He sent his son to this earth to die for all of mankind. The Jew who would turn to God in, in humble obedience and obey the gospel would be saved the same as the Gentile who did such. Unfortunately, Jew and Gentile alike, most will reject his offer in Christ Jesus. But that's not a reflection of God. He gives mankind free will. God has done his part. God patiently waited for the Jews to come to him. And he graciously extended his offer of salvation through Jesus to them as he does us. I want to close this morning with Romans chapter 2 at verse 4, where, where Paul would say this. And this is, this is a great question, a probing thought for us as we go throughout our day. Or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? That is the purpose of God's patience, his kindness. But because of your stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you're storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each person according to his deeds. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, for another week in your word, Father, we are most thankful. Father, we pray this week that you will bless us, that you will give us opportunities to, to share you with others, for your love, mercy, for your kindness. Father, we're so thankful. But certainly, Father, we recognize that there are consequences to unbelief. There are consequences to not accepting your grace on your terms. Father, help us to be thankful. May that gratitude move us and compel us to serve you, Father, better than we have in the past. Help us to serve our fellow man, Father. Bless us this day. Be with all those who are sick and hurting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.